Hi everyone, this is Joy with Create It With Joy. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's card is a really fun card using Simon Hurley's Caroling Squad. Also using uh, Essentials by Ellen Winter Window and a brick stencil by Wendy Vecchi to make a really cute, fun Christmas card. So the first thing I'm going to do is tape off where the ground will be. At the end, I guess I really didn't need to do that, but I was kind of, I kind of changed my plans partway through this card. So my vision for this card is to kind of have a brick wall like this is part of the house. So I've got this stencil, Mini Bricks by Wendy Vecchi, and I am laying down some fire bricked distress inks with a mini ink blending tool. And then I'm going to come back in with the detailed uh, little mini ink blending brush. Not No, not a brush, like a foam thing. You'll see it in my hand in a minute. And I'm going to add some aged mahogany. See that little thing right there? I'm going to add some aged mahogany to just some little parts of this stenciled brick. I want it to have that, you know, different, different texture looking bricks so it's not so flat. So I'm going to add that. I'm kind of just adding it where the little sections of brick meet. So on the sides of each brick. Nothing crazy. I'm not being super particular, just laying down the color. I like how it turned out when it, when it was done. It gives nice variation. It makes your background stand out a little more if you can add some depth and dimension, even just with different colors of ink. It works out so nicely. And this little detail um, ink blending tool is fantastic for that. So now I'm going to finish up the next side. I just scooched it over, lined everything up, taped it down, and finished up. So I've got this nice full background that looks like a nice brick wall. I think this is classic. I think you can use it really for anything. And look how nice that is. Isn't that super cute? I had so much fun. So this window that I'm just, I just cut out a quick die cut window to kind of line up and make sure everything was good. I am taking a white gel pen and adding some detail all over the brick, just some little white dots here and there, again, to add a little more dimension because you're gonna see a lot of brick on this card, so I felt like that was important. Then I'm taking um, some gray marker W1 and W3 of my Copics, and just underneath the brick, adding a little bit of shadow, and it's probably hard to see at this point that I'm, when I'm coloring it in. It's not super dark, but if you look at a brick wall and it sticks out, you're gonna have a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just adding a little bit of that, just you know, here and there, to pretty much to most of the bricks, but not all of it. So I'm not sure if you can see here, but it does give it a little bit more dimension, like that these bricks look a little more 3D, they're not so flat. Okay, so I die cut three times um, using, oh, um, sorry, Essentials by Ellen, Winter Window. I've had this since last year and never used the window. And I forgot I had it and came across it and was super excited to use it for this card. Just gluing that together with some uh, multimedia matte glue from Ranger. Just because I wanted to have some dimension off the front of this house. Now I'm taking the icicles from that same die set and I'm going to run that through my die cut machine and that's going to go on top of the window. I just cut a scrap piece of paper to go behind the window and I am using Distress Oxide inks, ink excuse me, in scattered straw. I'm going darker around the edges and light in the center just to kind of give it a nice little glow from inside the house. So now I'm going to glue that to the back of my die cut window. And remember, I glued three of these together for dimension. You don't have to do that. You could also use Fun Foam instead if that is something that you wanted to do. So I'm just going to glue that together, let that dry. So now I want to glue on the icicles that I die cut earlier just to the top of this window. And I just think it's such a cute um, little addition to have. I think what a great, fun isn't that cute? What a great fun um, thing to have for your window for Christmas or wintery or anything. Now I'm going to adhere that down to my card. 
because we're going to have this cute caroler on the outside and a cute pup on the inside. Now here's where I changed my mind. I decided I wanted to have some hills and I popped them up on foam tape and these are my favorite things, snow drifts. And I cut two of them and I'm lining them up. I don't want to cover all of the window, but I want it to feel like there is a lot of snow outside. And then we're going to do something fun to these snow drifts. And I've never done anything like this. And oh my gosh, I had such a good time. Okay, so this is Distress Glitter from Ranger Rock Candy, Tim Holtz. And this I'm using is Ranger's Texture Paste. paste. Um, it's an opaque matte. So it is white. I am going to lay it down with my little palette knife. I just got a plastic palette knife. Um, I am definitely not trying to make it perfect because I want it to look like snow. So I am just kind of covering the, and I still want to keep the de definition of the two hills that I just laid down. So I'm just following those. I'm not putting it down super thick. I mean, really, I, I didn't use that much at all. But at the top of the hills, I kind of wanted it to be a little messy. So I didn't make it super neat because, I mean, it's snow. You know, when it falls, when you play in it, it gets kind of fluffy looking. And that's really how I wanted this to look. So I did this now. I'm going to set this aside to dry. Before it dries, though, I'm going to sprinkle on this distressing glitter, the rock candy glitter, and it's so beautiful. And I'm not putting it over the whole thing, just kind of in the top parts of the um, snow. Then I am going to use um, diamond stickles for the ice, the ice stickles. It's perfect for this. It looks so pretty. I'm putting on all this wet stuff now. To, and then I will let it dry while we're coloring the images. Normally, I don't do like the stickles and stuff till the end, so it has time to dry. But isn't that pretty? Can you guys see the glitter and the shimmery and the shine and how much that looks like snow? I love it. So I'm going to set this aside to dry while we color our images. Now, these are these this cute guy who looks like he is just singing his heart out. This is from Simon Hurley's Caroling Squad. Um, hit the pup and the Christmas wreath. So I'm using Copic markers and I've got them on the screen and this is for the green I'm using G28, 14, and 09 and I'm just laying down some light coming in with the dark making a little bit of shadow. I wanted his scarf to be green. I wanted to carry a little bit of green over to his outfit um, but isn't this guy just so funny? What a cute little character. He is cracking me up. And then a little bit of green on that pup. So now we're going to color the bow red. And for red, I am using R20, which will be for cheeks, R22, 24, 34, and 37. Or maybe it's just 37. I think that's what it is. I don't think it's R34. I just can't even read my own writing, you guys. So I'm coloring that in. A little bit of shading again, the same thing, bringing that red over to his shirt, adding some dark shadows. I mean, I'm, I'm no color expert, but I have to say I really do love these Copic markers. They really make coloring a whole lot easier. Once you kind of get the idea of how to blend them together, which I don't feel like is too difficult, you just really get this nice color. Um, R20 was for his tongue. Now I'm going to use some blues for his pants. I wanted him to have some blue jeans, so I did B24 and 37. And then he's going to have some green socks and some brown shoes. So for his skin, I did E11 and E30. And just kind of blended that out softly. And added a little bit. I think I did R22 for his cheeks. I started with R20 and it wasn't dark enough, and I changed it to R22. And a little bit of R22 on his tongue because I felt like that needed to stand out just a little bit more. Brown for his shoes. I think that was probably E30. And then this cute pup is going to be E55 and E57. He's just a cute little guy. And I like the size of him. It worked out perfect for this card. He's like a little tiny, a little tiny pup. I have big pups. I have two huge dogs. Okay, so now see this little lamp? I colored it off screen and I colored it in YR27 or and 24, but it is from 
uh, Mama Elephant's Let's Go Caroling. It was a whole lamp stand, and I just cut the top part off to look like the lamp, um, you know, like your, your lights outside of your house. Pops that up on foam tape, put some foam tape behind my cute little caroling guy, um, trimmed off the bottom part of the pup and tucked him down into the window. And so now you can kind of get what's going on. Took a little more of that paste and put it in the corners of these window panes to make it look like the snow has settled. And I think this is probably one of my most favorite things that I did on this card. Not that I am a genius or anything by any means, but I think it turned out really cute and I loved how it looked. And I did add a little more of that uh, rock candy glitter to that. And I didn't mind that I did it later because it's such a little amount. It's going to dry so fast. Now, I did not let this dry overnight before coming back to this card, so I was really careful about touching that bottom part where the snow is because it still was a little, it still was wet, even though it wasn't a super thick application. Using some glossy accents on my outdoor light to make, give it that glass effect. And then from the Caroling Squad stamping set, stamp set, I am going to stamp some music notes because he is just singing away having himself a good old time, taking some more of that diamond stickles and adding it to those music notes. I wanted those to stand out against the brick wall. And so adding a little bit of glitter really did help. Added some glitter to the bow on the wreath that we stuck to the front of the window. I did put foam tape behind the wreath as well because I wanted that to stand out. Now here was something that was really fun. I thought I would try it out. Taking a little bit of that texture paste rolling it in my fingers to make a snowball, then putting some of that rock candy glitter over it and attaching it down. So I made three little snowballs standing, sitting next to this cute little guy. And this stuff is not super messy. Like, I mean, it, as you can tell, my finger isn't super messy after having it on my hands, but isn't that super cute? And then honeybee stamps, uh, kiss me clay hearts above this little pup. And I did stamp the antlers on that little dog in the window, but he is just loving that he is being sung to adding some diamond stickles to the hearts and then using Simon says stamp bee sting ink to stamp Merry Christmas. Now I made a big boo-boo here. See when I stamped the word Christmas, oh my gosh, it's smudged and I about had a heart attack. But from this window, I had little die cut pieces. I inked it up, re-stamped it, slid it into that spot. You cannot even tell the difference. Added a little more of that texture paste at the bottom and we're good to go. Now I'm gonna be adding some uh, white gel pen from Ranger for some little details you know, on his outfits. If you see my cards, you know I, I tend to do this. On his outfit, on the wreath, and a little bit of gla black glaze pen on the pup's face. And look at how cute, glittery, 3D, snowy that is. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I appreciate all of your support. If you like what you've seen, please thumbs up, subscribe, share, and comment. I love to comment with you, to comment back and forth with you guys. I have some affiliate links below. It costs you nothing, but it does continue to help me create. Thanks again, and I will see you guys soon.